Hello everyone. After having just finished Deus Ex, I wanted to come back and give my thoughts about it. So my overall impressions of Deus Ex is that it's a really damn good game and I really enjoyed playing it. It was actually a surprising amount of fun and the reason it was surprising is because I was worried it'd be the case where it's the sort of game that has a lot of nostalgia that comes with it. And of course it does, I mean it's, it's such a well-loved series that so many people played when they were younger. It's just really well-loved, it's a classic. And I was worried that because I didn't have any nostalgic connection to it at all, that that would be an issue. Uh, because I don't have any nostalgic connection to the Deus Ex series whatsoever. I did play through Deus Ex to completion, I think, when I was really young. But it was so long ago, I don't remember it at all. So it it's basically as if I've never played it before. You know, I, I didn't come back into it with more happy memories. I came back into it not remembering what happened at all. So, uh, you know, I'm just... Coming, I was coming into Deus Ex with just all the expectations of a of a modern gamer, you know? And it's a pretty old game at this point. It's actually really old. It's about, what, 14 years old, I think? Somewhere around there. So that's why I was worried I wouldn't actually... I, I was worried I wouldn't like it, or at least I wouldn't like it as much as other people do. Because I never played it when I was young. But, um, yeah, that wasn't an issue. I really enjoyed it. And what's really strange to realize, too, is how much I enjoyed it, despite the fact that it has a lot of flaws. I mean, I don't think there's any denying that. There's so many flaws to the game that I just constantly noticed, but that didn't stop me from really enjoying it. Which surprised me. I think that speaks to how strong the good parts are, that it could offset the bad stuff so much. So let's dive into the reasons I liked it. I think there's three big things that I really liked about the game. And that's the level design, and how that supports the, the really open gameplay, where you can really take whatever path you want through the game. And it's the music, which you can probably hear in the background right now, the music is amazing. And then there's the story, which is just this epic tale of full of conspiracies and Illuminatis and Majestic Twelves and these weird shadowy organizations and world control and... AIs and whatnot, it's just, it's a freaking massive story. It's really big. And it's surprisingly well told. I say surprising because most games do not have well-written stories. This one actually kind of does. So let's delve into those in more depth. So the, so the first one, uh, the level design and the open gameplay. I think that is probably the core of what makes this game so fun to play. Is how it supports so many different approaches to situations. I mean, I went through the game playing as a stealth character. I attempted to play through the game non-lethally. That didn't work out so well. Um, I was almost entirely non-lethal, but I did kill some people and some creatures. But for the most part, I was non-lethal. And that's one totally valid way to go through the game. You can go through non-lethally. You can just hide in the shadows and you can take people out with your charger prod or your trank darts. And you can do that. Or you can just take out the big guns. You can snipe people in the face. Hello. Oh, God. Sorry. 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 No. No. Don't. Do oh. Oh. Let's reload. I guess I shouldn't have pulled my gun in a civilian area. Little bit rude. <clears throat> anyway. Back to what I was saying. Uh, What was I saying? Oh, yes. Different approaches. So it's totally valid to go through non-lethally, for the most part, with some weird little areas where you kinda have to be lethal. But for the most part you can, or you can just, you know, take out a sniper rifle and snipe everybody in the head from afar, or you can get up close and personal, bash people in the head and kill them with your dragon sword or whatever. Or you can just use explosives and blow everybody up. There's so many different ways you can approach it. I mean, even just within... I mean, I have the most experience with stealth, obviously, since that's how I play through the game. Even just within the stealth sort of framework, just playing through the game as a stealth character, even that presents a lot of choices itself. For example, there's a lot of situations where you can choose to... Well, you can kind of... You can try to get around a place by just going through the grates. Or you can try to find... You can hack a computer to try to find login details, and that'll get you through the doors instead of using the, you know, the grates and the air ducts. Or you can just blow up a door. Or you can just, I don't know, cloak yourself and sneak on by a bunch of people. I mean, there's so many different ways to approach it. 
Like, do you use your lockpicks to get through a lockpick door? Or do you wait until maybe you find the code to it, or the, the key to it, I mean? Do you use your multi-tools, or do you wait till you find the code to whatever you're gonna hack? Maybe there is no code. Maybe there is. Maybe just blow the damn thing up and don't bother with either of those. Or maybe you want to hack a turret and make it shoot the enemies. And then just, like, gather them all up and run them down the the hallway with the turret and then they all die to the turret. I mean, there's so many different ways you can approach each level. It's really cool. You can gain information by hacking, you can gain information by just talking to people, like, hello! Talking to, I disabled... I disabled the voice audio, but... Yeah, you can get a bunch of information through just talking to people. Have you heard of Maggie Chow? Get information about her. Read newspapers, get information from there, or books. Yeah, all these newspaper articles about current events in the world. Which goes to the, the strength of the story. Yeah, the gameplay is just incredibly open. And that's wonderful, it's so satisfying. To feel like whatever you're doing is actually unique. And whatever you want to do is actually supported by the game. It's very cool. So, next major thing is the music. I'm not sure if there's much I can say about it other than, well, it's freaking awesome. Because, well, it is. <laughs> it's one of the best video game soundtracks I've ever heard in my life. It's amazing. In fact, I should probably buy it if I can. I think I'd like to listen to it in my off times. Just, you know, on my MP3 player, out and about. It's damn, damn good. And the third major thing I like is the story. Once again, it's it's big, it's an epic story, it's full of conspiracies and shadowy organizations. And you get to play the character that basically is in the center of all of this. Or if you're not in the center, then at least you will be soon. I mean, your actions literally affect the fate of the world in the end. You have an amazing amount of influence over what actually happens. In the end, anyway. I mean, along the way, you don't really have that much of a choice, I think. I don't think there's much branching in the storyline until the very end. But still, you're at the heart of the fate of the world, basically. These, you know, you're in between all these organizations fighting each other. And it's up to you to decide how you want to deal with that, which organization you want to support, or do you want to support any of them? And it's, it's just such a, an interesting and strange story, full of everything from evil characters to just bizarre artificial intelligences. It's just kind of dripping with cool. It's awesome. And then there's so much world building, too, like all of these newspapers. Just about things that... Oh, like, look at this one, for example. This one. Canal Road Tunnel Collapse. This little news story here... Not only is it a bit of interesting world building, but it's something you can actually go and interact with. The Canal Road Tunnel Collapse is an actual tunnel that you can go to that has collapsed. And within it, you'll find strange creatures and a uh, person. And you can find his uh, Left Behind Diary and stuff like that. So you read about a tunnel collapse and you can actually go into the collapsed tunnel. Which is really cool, but then there's other stuff that you don't actually directly see. Yeah, like, Grey Death cases misdiagnosed. But they're just nice world building. It just makes you feel more like this stuff is actually happening. You know, there is a plague. It's happening. People are being affected by it. People are dying. There's attempts to diagnose it. Mass driver incident kills over 2,000. This is about... Yeah, it's about the delivery of ore from a lunar mining complex. I mean, you never get to go to the moon or anything like that. But it just really builds the world. It makes you feel like you're living in this this future world where these things are possible that are possible in today so I'm really impressed with the story and the amount of world building that goes on it's very cool now I did talk about the game having a lot of flaws and it certainly does it's it, I feel like pretty much everything is flawed it's kind of amazing how flawed it is while still being really fun so I think, let's see, I think the biggest flaw for me, personally... Well, I don't know if that's the biggest flaw. Okay, I'll just say a couple of the big flaws for my own personal playstyle that I went through the game with. One is the augmentations. 
Okay, at this point in the game, I didn't have all of the augmentations, but... Yeah, the augmentations for a stealth character are just freaking trash. They're horrible. For a game that's obviously made to support, for the most part, consciously made to support a stealth playthrough, and a non-lethal stealth playthrough where you just, you know, charge or prod people in the back, or beat them in the head with a baton, or use trank darts on them, that sort of stuff, or just avoid them. It's obviously meant to support that, but it seems like they practically forgot that when it comes to the augmentations. Because it, it took many, many hours, I think five, maybe ten hours, till I got the first augmentation that was even slightly useful to my playthrough. I mean, I kept getting weird stuff like vision enhancement, didn't matter. Extra strength, completely useless. Spy drone, except the enemies can see the spy drone, so it's not much of a spy drone because then they just shoot at you and they know you're there. Or ballistic protection, which is only relevant if you're seen by enemies and are being shot at. So there's all this, all these augmentations, and a lot of them are, if not outright useless on their own, like mic microfibril muscle is just a really bad augment for anybody. But even if they are useful for some character builds, you know, more action-oriented character builds, still almost none of them are useful for a stealth build. And it really wasn't until I got the cloak here, the subdermal whatever. Oh, that, yeah, subdermal's a slot. It wasn't until I got the cloak that I actually had a really, truly useful augment that actually supported my stealth playstyle. And it, taken a, it took an amazingly long time to get to that point. And for a game where you're a augmented person who can install these, you know, install these augments, you're, you're a superhuman. And it's a major part of the game. You're this cool soldier who can change their body to suit however they want to play. And so to have my playstyle not represented in the augments for a huge chunk of the game was really frustrating and bizarre. I'm not sure what's up with that. It's really strange. And I think the other major problem I had with it is the AI is really bad. It's really not very good at all. Especially when it comes to stealth. I mean, even if you just go to shoot them, they're really dumb. They basically just run at you and shoot. But their response to stealth actions, such as throwing distracting objects to make them look somewhere else, and stuff like that, is... There's just not a lot there. Like, it's, it's so simplistic that there's not a lot of interesting interactions you can really have in terms of interacting with the AI in a stealthy way. Which is really disappointing. Because, obviously, I was playing as a stealth character. So it would have been nice to be able to do some more cool stuff. But, nah, couldn't really do that. Mostly just beat him in the back of the head. Or use the charger prod when I actually had ammo for that. And that's another thing. There seems to be a lack of ammo for the charger prod, especially towards the end of the game. Almost as if the designers thought, like, nobody's gonna be using stealth here, why even bother? I mean, I think in the last three, maybe more, at least the last three hours of the game, I'm pretty sure I only found one cartridge for the charger prod. I felt like the designers forgot about stealth. Like they didn't even really consider it. It was just, it was really bizarre. And there's a bunch of other smaller stuff. Such as, well, the menu system is kind of, I don't know, it's just, it's cluttery. You can't even drag objects out to drop them. You gotta press the drop button and it doesn't feel good to interact with stuff here. It's kind of weird. The controls are kind of weird. Like having to use the F keys to activate the the augments is really annoying, because I never know where the F keys are, because I practically never use them. I mean, really, who, who uses their F keys frequently? I'm guessing most people don't. I can get to my number keys quickly, but... One, three, four, seven, six. Like, I can do that without even looking. But the F keys, they're just in a weird spot up there. I have to feel around, like, am I in the four to five, like, four to... What is it, five to eight row, or what? It's just really bizarre. There's lots of fiddly stuff for the inventory and the controls. And the weird fact that you can't pick up bodies until you've looted everything from their body. So if you don't have room in your inventory for their assault rifle, for example, you can't pick up the assault rifle, which means you can't pick up the body. And other enemies will notice the body and sound the alarms. So it's, it's weird stuff like that. And if there is a way to just pick up a body without having looted them, I couldn't find it. I looked at the controls for some specific pickup body or something control and I, I don't see it. 
So some weird stuff like that. Um, the... Let's see, the voice acting is really mediocre overall. Yeah. There are some standouts. Some people are particularly good. But for the most part, it's... Ugh. It's just... Ugh. I'm still not sure whether J.C. Denton is actually well voice acted or not. I mean, he's... Super monotone. He's really passionless in how he says things, but at the same time, I wonder if that's supposed to be part of his character or if it's because he's not a good voice actor. I can't really tell. So I'm not sure how I feel about him. But yeah, the voice acting, eh, not too good. I'm sure there's a bunch of other stuff. But yeah, it's funny to take a look back and think, like, like I was trying to think, why do I like this game so much? I really enjoy playing it. And then I started looking at individual elements. I was thinking, oh, maybe it's the maybe it's the stealth. Eh, not really. The stealth system is really not very advanced. There's not a whole mo lot of feedback. There's not a whole lot of interesting stealthy sort of interactions with the with the rather poor artificial intelligence. So no, not really. Maybe it's the voice acting. N no, not not really. Maybe it's the sound. Not really. The music's great, but the sound effects are pretty poor. So if you look at the individual elements, for the most part, they're not very good, but when you take the thing as a whole, when you have this amazing soundtrack combined with this really detailed world that's really developed well, with an interesting story, and then within this interesting world you have this really open gameplay that, for the most part, rewards your playstyle, it just becomes really engaging. Even if it is wonky. Yeah, it's just... It's a damn good game, and I'm saying that as someone who's playing it... Basically playing it, f at least for real, about 14 years after it came out. It's a really old game, but I'm just coming to it now, and I've, you know, I've played other modern, super-polished AAA titles, and even coming to this now, with all of the expectations that sort of a thing gives me. And I still love it. It's a damn good game. And I think it's a testament to how well... How well designed it is. And how well made it is. At least with some of the most important elements. I think it's a testament to how well made the most important elements are. That it still holds up even to this day. Alright, so there you go. Those have been my thoughts on Deus Ex. Thank you for watching.